Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Bill and this lesson is lesson number six for command stacking. And so just for quick reference, we're going to put the lesson notes right up here. And uh, that's where you can find uh, all the latest notes, maybe updates after the video posts and things like that. Or if you, the notes will also be in the comments for YouTube video. And uh, But if you are watching somewhere else other than YouTube, you can always go to the uh, techtips.billherzing.com and check it out. So let's get started. Okay, let's pick up from last time. We can do a quick task list and see our task from last time. If we do a task delete, we're going to say no. But what you can do is it, you can see that you're kind of given a warning that, hey, if you actually type task delete, it's going to apply it to all your tasks. So just be careful about that. So let me show you how to back up task warrior data. So we go to local disk, uh, sigwin64, home, administrator.tasks. And these four files are your key files. So we're going to send those to a compressed zip folder and call them just backup. Now, if I come back to my task line, I type task delete and say yes. And then say all. It's going to delete all the tasks. We can confirm that by typing task list and see there's no matches. Task tags, no matches. And task projects, task project, no matches. So all the task projects and tags have been deleted that we've created. So let's restore this. So here's my backup file. I'm going to open that up, say extract, and then extract all. Now I'm not going to put it in its own folder. I'm going to overwrite it to the dot tasks, say extract, then replace the files in the destination. And then it's done. I'm going to close this window. If I do a task list, you can see my tasks are back. Task tags, tags are back. Task project and my projects are back. Another quirky thing I found with Task Warrior is how it labels or, task, or how the task IDs are applied. So if I do a new task by flower, and that's task five, a new task by sugar, that's task six, then a new task by butter, that's task seven. And if I do a task list, I can see those tasks are listed in there. Now if I do a task six delete, so we're going to delete by sugar, say yes. Okay, task six has been deleted. If I list out task seven, you can see it's by butter. Okay, that's fine. That's if by butter is exactly as uh, we expect here in the task list. And remember task six by sugar has been deleted. So if I do task six, you see by sugar and the status is changed from pending to deleted. Now this will update, the task IDs will update if you do another task list. They're all reassigned. Here, let's watch. So if I do a task list, you can see now the task numbers, task IDs have been reassigned. By butter is now task six. So if I do task six, it's by butter. Ta task seven no longer exists. So something to be aware of and keeping track with task IDs. They're very subjective. So let's do new task and buy sugar. Let's put that back. All right, let's take, for instance, this cake making has started to turn into a business. And the first order is a uh, cake for John. So it's a birthday cake. So rather than having to type in each one of our commands separately, we know if we have a group birthday cake, we probably have to buy eggs, milk, and sugar, and all these things. Uh, there's going to be a due date that's going to be set for this cake. So we don't want to buy our stuff too soon, right? We don't want to buy our ingredients too soon, so we're going to want to be fresh. We're going to build a function that has all that information built in. So let's get started. So let's build a new task. Cake. Let's do a cake for John. I'm going to do a backslash. That allows me to add more to the command line. Say do colon 2017-07 dash 26, well, that's actually, let's say 29, and then backslash, and scheduled, and then colon, and we'll take our due date, and we'll make it minus 4D, so if minus 4 days from the due date, and then wait, colon, due date, minus 5D, backslash. And then we'll hit enter, and you can see task eight has been created. Now all this due uh, and scheduled and wait, all this is available in the task warrior documentation. You can read up all about it. But let's see what we got. So if I do a task eight information, you can see that 
The due date is the 29th, just as we said. That the schedule it's waiting until the 24th, which is five days out, and then and then scheduled on five days out for the 25th. But if I do a task list, you can see nothing shows up because it's scheduled out beyond our our collection date. So if I do a task wait, you can see task eight is there and it's waiting until July 24th to show up. So let's build a function. We'll go nano.bashrc and we'll go down. Let's start typing our new function line. New cake function is what I'm gonna call this one. Open parentheses, close parentheses, open square bracket, new line and tab, and then task add. I'm going to say bake cake four and then dollar sign one. So that's our fill in the blank kind of thing. Then we'll say do colon and our second variable will be dollar sign two. Then we'll do scheduled and colon and do minus four D four days from the due date. Then wait colon do minus 5d or five days from the due date now you could make these additional variables dollar sign uh, three and dollar sign four for for rather in, in where the four and the five are but uh, for this exercise I decided to leave that out and I'll talk more about that here in a bit so we're gonna close squiggly bracket then a new line then type in our alias new cake it's going to be our alias name equals I'm going to copy and paste so I don't fat finger this new cake function then we'll control X say yes so we're going to resource our dot bash RC by typing reload and then we're just going to kind of recap the command the function here so I'm going to just put a hashtag at beginning line so it, it's it's uh, it doesn't process it type in new cake just a kind of as a reminder here then the name name of the person for the cake and the date now this is what I was talking about earlier I would have a scheduled and then also wait and so those two values there uh, I had originally intended to have them as additional variables to add it to the command line but I thought it added too much complexity so I left those out but uh, when I was typing this out I in my notes I forgot that I had removed those and so you'll see it here in this command and in the next command where I have two additional variables at the end, but uh, the the function will just ignore them because there's no there's no variable spot for them to go, so they're, so they're just ignored at the end. So just ignore the scheduled and wait for this command. But know that you could go back and re-add those if you wanted to with additional variables, uh, as I mentioned earlier. All right, so let's do new cake, our function name, our new function name, then the name of the person we're making the cake for. In this case, we're going to make it for Josh. Then we're going to set the date for the due date. 2017-07-31 and then this is these extraneous variables that I mentioned to you just just a second ago they were going to be scheduled for and then wait five days out from the due date so we hit enter and task 9 is created so if I do a task 9 info you can see there that the due date is on 731 and the waiting and the schedule date are were already programmed into the function, so those are populated automatically. If I do a task wait, you can see there the tasks are waiting uh, in wait status and they're not currently active. So let's add to the function. Let's say that we want to have fresh ingredients for our cakes. We want fresh eggs and milk and all that other good things. So we're going to add uh, to our task list to make sure that when those tasks are approaching that we are also have tasks to go buy fresh ingredients for those cakes. We're going to edit our bash RC file and let's add a new line to our new cake function. So we're going to go task add buy eggs. Let's give it a tag from the lesson that we learned for the uh, tag correction episode that I just did in the lesson five. We're going to say dollar sign one, comma grocery plus dollar sign one, comma grocery. And what this gives us is it's going to add a grocery tag to the buy eggs, and it's going to give us the name. The variable dollar sign one is the name for the person's cake that we're buying it for. Let's give this task a due date. 
the same due date maybe um for dollar sign two that for our source task then for scheduled let's say for example it's going to be due date minus one with a wait date colon due date minus two days so it's going to pop up on our radar two days out and be scheduled to be due the day before the cake is due so let's just copy this to a new line I'm say copy and then paste and let's fix some of the things in our line here first let's move this back a notch then rather than eggs let's add another task for flour then a new line then paste again and we're going to replace eggs with milk and then fix the tab at the beginning here the space at the beginning we'll save this and then let's do a reload to resource our dot bash rc all right let's do our new cake command this time we're going to bake a cake for jessica and let's give it a date of 2017-07-23 make it somewhat uh, pretty pretty uh, current so hit enter you can see four tasks were created if i do a task list you can see my tasks are there uh ready they're active ready to go if i do a task plus grocery if i do a list of tags for grocery you can see there's my grocery list. You can make a grocery list out of that that I need to buy eggs, flour, milk, and then eggs and milk for Joe and Sally's cake as well. So already starting to build my grocery list there off of this task. If I do a quick up arrow and then say rather than a cake for Jessica, let's maybe say that another cake is due for Joni on the same day. We we'll hit enter. And we got four more tasks created waiting for us to process. So if I do a task list, now this is a little tag footnote I did find out. If you have capital and and lowercase letters, they are sorted differently. So Jessica is lowercase, Joni is uppercase, and so uppercase is sorted first, but they're still valid tags. And to prove that, I'll do a task, uh, should be plus grocery, task plus grocery. And then you can see that Jessica's shopping list grocery list is also there with Joni's as well let's edit our bash rc file and our function to assign it to a project as well so we're going to go down to and at the end of each line we're going to add another variable for project so we're just say project colon dollar sign three for our third variable and add that to the end of each line then we'll save and close We'll reload our .bash rc file, and then here's a trick that you can do if you type in, um, let's actually do this, let's type type new cake, and new cake is alias to a particular function, so let's type new cake function, and we can see all the details of our function here. So if you need a reminder how to run a command or what, what's going to be in a command, you can see we need three variables, the name, the due date, and then the project name. So uh, just as a quick so I'll use it sometimes when I need uh, a reminder of what was in a particular function. So for this one, we're going to type in new cake. You can see here we need a name. So new cake for Michael. Next, we need a date, a due date for this new cake function, this new event. We'll do 2017-08-01. We need a third project variable. We need a variable for project. Third variable is project. This is going to be a birthday and if we hit enter you can see task warrior reports out that the uh, task was created and has been assigned to a project and if i do a task list you can see that michael's tasks do not show up for michael's birthday cake because it's a little too soon but we can always check our waiting tasks by doing task wait and there they are so we can see that they are uh, waiting to show up on the 27th and the 30th well, I hope you found this helpful. I use command stacking all the time where I have a new project and those projects have several tasks that need to happen and fire in a certain order at a certain time. Command stacking is a great way to solve that. So uh, we've talked a lot about putting stuff into Task Warrior. The next lesson, Lesson 7, we'll be talking about getting stuff out of Task Warrior. So I uh, hope you're looking forward to that lesson. And if you're liking this series, remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And we'll see you next time.